All right, and we're live from the nation's capital. I'm Max, and I'm back with Bess. And we're kicking off this weekend with a matchup between the Capital Courts Prep and Southwest Academy. Absolutely, Max. It's so great to be back um, for this 2017-2018 OSBA season in my hometown. So hey, exciting. Ottawa, shout out. <laughs> Your girl Bess is back. So we've got Southwest Basketball Academy against Capital Courts, both coming off losses in their last game. So we will have one of those teams being pulled out of the slump. <laughs> yep, great. And Southwest comes into this matchup with a 3-4 and four record, where Capital Courts is currently 2-7. and seven. So both looking to get back into that win column. Let's see if we can pull it out <laughs> on this Friday afternoon. Absolutely. And it'll be really interesting to see in their last game against Crothers. Uh, Southwest was on the losing end of a... 83 to 77 contest, so a really high scoring game. Um, we'll see Capital Courts here obviously has a, uh, a shorter roster, so we'll see how they can keep up with that potent offense uh, here tonight. Perfect, and then here we have, we have the starters reaching the floor for both courts. For Capital Courts, we have Russell, Jolie Kerr, Zeba, Godet, and Newman. For Southwest, we have Donovan, Ugevin, Welts, Litchfield, and Capital Courts wins the tip. Here's Russell at the top. And Russell is just having a really impressive season and a really impressive couple of last games on the offensive end particularly, so we'll look for that tonight. Off the miss, Capital Courts gets it right back, but Russell's shot attempt is a little bit off the mark. It's going to be out of bounds going southwest ball. And in the games we did last year too, same thing, Max. It takes a little while for the teams to settle in, so we'll see who can get their composure here early on uh, uh, first. Here's a little four, full court press there by Capital Courts. Southwest looks to handle it well. Litchfield's pass down low is tipped out of bounds, so it's going to be still Southwest ball. Absolutely. A good look uh, on the back door there, but some good defense by Jolie Kerr as well to get in the way of that pass. Here's Donovan now working against Zeba. Goes to the left hand a little bit off, but follows her own miss and puts the miss right back in. Two points, Laura Donovan. Really great to see, Max. Uh, getting after her own offensive rebound, and they're getting a steal. Right back the other way. Southwest puts pressure of their own, and Southwest comes away with it. An open shot there for Piper Dew, and she finishes as well. A quick 4 nothing lead here for Southwest. And both of those on second chance opportunities, so I think we're going to see Capital Courts uh, having a bit of a talk about getting a body on somebody defensively and not allowing any second chances. And right back the other way, Godet finishes for Capital Courts. It's now a 4-2 Southwest lead. Lots of intensity here in the gym as it's a school day. We have a big crowd out for both teams. The Litchfield's three is a little bit too strong. It bounces off the diving Piper do, and it's going to be Capital Courts ball. Early substitutions here for Capital Courts. And I think uh, part of that conversation there we'll talk about on the defensive end, describing those rebounds. So here you have Capital Courts inbounding with, the f again, full court pressure by Southwest as we just are dealing with a little timer issue, so we'll get back. Perfect, and both teams applying that pressure early and really trying to get, I guess, get into their rhythm, um, get some momentum in this game. Just checking in here for Capital Courts, we now have Morrow and, oh, sorry, that's Steenbackers and Newman both checking in, so. Tip here and a turnover going the other way for Southwest. Again, the full court pressure playing dividends for Southwest Academy. Max, the quality of players in the OSBA is very high, but I mean, it's still unusual on a high school basketball team to have all of your players comfortable handling the ball. So a full court press is a really good way um, to create opportunities and, and get some easy, uh, easy turnovers, easy looks. Russell breaks through the double team. Let's see how Capital Courts now looks in the half court. Newman gets around her defender right to the basket, unable to finish though, but gets her own offensive rebound. A really strong take, she just needs to finish that there. Low shot clock here for Russell. I think it should have been a reset, Max, uh, off Newman's missed layup. I'm not sure if we got that, but we'll see what's going on here. A little bit of a confusion there with the shot clock, so Russell's basket was no good, so it will be Capital Court's ball on the sideline. Pretty great step back, though, if that had yep. counted. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Not too shabby for the OSBA's leading scorer, Marissa Russell. 
When we were looking at the stats pregame, it looks like she's averaging about 25 points a game. Very, very impressive. And, and um, she's improving as the season is going on. So uh, I think she had a 34-point game the other night. Yep. Uh, Last two, 34 and 31. So absolutely. Piling in the points of late. Also doing this all as a grade 10 in the OSBA too. So it's always amazing. a pleasure to watch. Steenbacker's driving, kicks out to Newman, puts up the shot, but it's going to be a shot clock violation too late. So great defense there by London, and it's going to be Southwest ball. And here we go, Capital Hoops also up in that pressure. See if they can get a, a, a turnover here, a quick turnover. Yeah. There Bebe we go. Goes for the steal, and she comes up with it. Here's Russell in transition. Excellent. She's going to be fouled and head to the line for two. That's a really strong take. Southwest, um, especially in that full court, I mean anywhere, but you have to come to the basketball. We can't wait and let it come to you. We really have to attack the ball or else that's going to happen and the defense is going to tip it away. Russell's on the line here, shooting two. And hits the first. And a little bit off in the second. Southwest ball. Kay. Sort of a little just shot clock. Just having some issues at the table early. They're Not a big deal. Out. Absolutely. They early, will definitely better to happen <laughs> early than late. So let's iron all those things out now. Clean second half. Absolutely. And because of the full court presses both ways, we haven't really seen um, set offenses from either team yet. So let's see what uh, what Southwest gives us here, what they have a little fancy out of bounds play they're going to show <laughs> us or what they're going to try and get into. They have 20 seconds left on the clock to work with. So we have Litchfield to enter the ball for Southwest. We have Welts on the left wing, driving against Godet. It's a good cut across the key there by Sarah Donovan. I think her teammates need to recognize that, get her the ball on that cut. She can go up easily in, that, in there with her long arms, get a good shot off. Number 11, Piper Dew unable to hit that. Russell comes down with it, and she's pushing the other way for Capital Courts. Godet, a corner three. Too strong, but Capital Courts is able to retain the possession. So I think, again, we might be having some confusion with the shot clock. I'm not sure if that ball hit the rim or not, uh, but that might be the conversation. It looks like we've got maybe some support coming <laughs> over <laughs> for this table crew. Some reinforcements on the shot clock. Just going to help it out. We have a very supportive crowd here, so it's all good. Yep, so score is 4-3 uh, with 6 minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. It has been a little bit all over the place to begin the game. Uh, not a whole lot of flow to start with, um, but we'll see if they can work out these first few minute uh, jitters. We can get some rhythm to the <laughs> game here. And checking in right now, we have Piper Dew checking out. And it looks like number four, Addy Mayla checking in. Number six, I think, just came oh, in. Oh, sorry, number six, so it's going to be Lauren Morrow. Russell right to the basket again, and she's going to be fouled again on that take. She'll be back to the line for two more attempts. And more comes in there, and I think really, really important when you're subbing it off the bench to know your assignment and, and know um, where you're going to be uh, defensively so we, that Russell can't get that easy layup and, and get right back to the line. It's on the first. And the second, so that's three early points here for Russell. Litchfield kicks it over to Donovan, cutting through. A little bit of a motion offense here, trying to get some movement. Open look on the wing. And just checking in, we have number six, Lauren Morrow, hitting on that three point. So instant dividends from that sub. Perfect. Oh, and, and again, the full court pressure causing a steal as Donovan's able to come up with it. No luck on that one, but Southwest got some really great movement the last time, made the defense move and react, and then got an open look that Morrow was able to knock down. 
There's Russell on the right wing, looking to attack. Gets a little sidestep to the jumper, just off. Fight for the rebound, and Steenback oh. is able to come up with it. Pass tipped out of bounds, gonna remain Capital Court ball. Great cut there. Um, just defensively got their hands on it. Excellent reaction there. Subs both ways. We have Russell and Welts both checking out. Tipped out of bounds on Newman's pass. It's still going to be capital court ball. Nine seconds on the shot clock here for capital courts. Let's see how they attack. Newman. And Southwest is showing a zone there on the out of bounds play. Talking through it well and getting the turnover. Steinbacker's there with a travel down low, so it's going to be Southwest ball. Oh, and the press, they have a leaking out Donovan who's able to finish in traffic. Two more points for Laura Donovan. Great look. So important offensively to keep your eyes up, look down the floor, connect with your teammates. Southwest now showing a man defense. So mixing it up constantly against Capital Courts. Let's see how they respond. I think Capital Courts has had a little less movement offensively than Southwest. Um, and when Russell's in the game, she can definitely create her own shot. But with the group on the floor right now, I think they're going to have to work together a little bit better to make sure that they can get up some uh, quality opportunities and, and not have so many turnovers. So a great tie up there on Dennis on Steinbacker's pass down low. So it's going to go Southwest ball on the jump. Donovan, the left wing three, just short. Fight for the rebound is gonna go to Southwest though. And Morrill's pass is just a little bit too high for the cutter, so it's gonna be out of bounds. Ball going to Capital Courts. Southwest remains in their full court pressure. And the pass is just a bit too high from Godet, so Southwest picks up another steal with the full court defense. And Maylot had a cutting Donovan there uh, to get a quick, another quick two on the, on the uh, coming off the press, just missed her. The shot attempt there by Welts is a bit too strong. Capital Courts comes down with it. They get it to Godet and she's gonna slow things down for Capital Courts. Here's Jolie Kerr. Double teamed. Looks like, oh, got a foul. Just checked into the ball game and they try and get her a look early in the post and it's gonna be Foul there on. And you hear Coach uh, Coach Blizzard calling there. If Jolly Carr is going to be double teamed in the post, they <laughs> need to get some movement on the wing, get open, get to a spot where you can receive the ball, um, and look to maybe get a shot or create an opportunity for somebody else. Got to help out our teammates. So here's Southwest going into a zone off that. Emerson, the deep three, too strong. Maylot's able to come down with the rebound. We also had Godet going out on that last foul and Russell checking back in. So Capital Court's really recycling through the players here early, getting everyone in and out, keeping those fresh legs in the game. And Maylot able to follow up the offensive rebound with a make of her own. Southwest doing a great job with that motion offense and Capital Court's having a really hard time on the shot attempts, finding their man and boxing out. Um, Southwest continuing to have a lot of second chance opportunities, which are, they're doing a great job of capitalizing on. Ziba with the cut, down to Jolie Kerr. Kicks out to McPhee, three, no good. Running out is Southwest. They try and find Donovan, passes too long though. Right back this way comes Capital Court's. Russell to Ziba, the left wing three. Just too strong. No good. And we're getting these shot attempts really early in the shot clock. Uh, now their team really taking a lot of time to develop their offense. Really quick up and down style of play right now. Do kicks out. Little pull up there from Southwest is no good. Capital Court's ball. And it's gonna be a foul there on the rebound. As a coach, not something you want to see, especially this early on in the game. Uh, you don't need to foul that far away from your basket, looking just looking for some ball containment. And with that foul, we do have a timeout going to Capital Court. So going into the first timeout of the game, we have a lead Southwest 11, Capital Court's 5. 
So early on, Southwest full court pressure has really given, given some capital courts some trouble early on, forcing a lot of turnover, speeding up them. What, if you're capital courts right now, what is something you can try and do to slow the game down, get in some chances, try and put some more points on the board? I think, number one, the first thing you can do is you can box out. Uh, <laughs> you can secure the defensive rebound and ensure South, Southwest, I think, I mean, six of their points, I think, have come off those second chance opportunities um, over half. And so just securing the basketball, giving yourself a chance offensively to to, um, to score, to get a couple points on the board, so important. Um, and then also, you just have to be more aware uh, offensively when you are securing the ball. They've passed it right to the other team <laughs> on a couple of instances and just just being confident with the basketball too yep. right you can dribble you you can beat your your man um and look to find uh to find another teammate i think offensively for capital courts now that russell is back on the floor look to get a little more movement get her in um you know get her with the defense a little bit off balance so she can go to work a little bit and jelly kerr as well has been strong in the post so looking to get her those opportunities too all right, so coming out of the timeout, Southwest remains with the full court pressure. We'll see how Capital Courts responds. So Day also checking right back in for Capital Courts. So here we are, we're getting a little bit of movement from Capital Courts, we're getting some down screens, looking there, freeing up right for the shot. Newman travel, unfortunately. Just little hop before she received it there, so she's going to be called for the travel before the shot. But good look, though. Good possession for Capital Court. Absolutely, Max. Yeah, they, they did. They got that simple movement, open shot, and there we go. Turnover, and they've got another opportunity here. Little butterfingers early for both teams as the ball has slipped through multiple players' hands. We'll see. That's probably going to be cleaned up. Just early jitters here as the first webcast comes to Ottawa. Godet with a little crossover, kicks over to Emerson, a long three, just off. Godet, though, fighting for the offensive board. Here we go. We see Capital Courts playing much more as a team. Good looks. There we go. Excellent Here's Russell work. on the block. Jolie Kerr follows her miss, Perfect. and she's able to finish. And here we hear the crowd erupt as Capital Courts gets back on the scoreboard. They're just looking for a reason to cheer, Max. <laughs> The deep three by Welts is no good. The follow there by Hoogieven, blocked by Russell. It's going to be out of bounds off Capitol Court, remaining Southwest ball. Good movement defensively. We're seeing a new energy here from Capitol Courts coming back out. So. Here's due over to Donovan. Litchfield. Good defense there by Emerson on due, but Dew's able to get around. Great defense there by Capital Courts causing the shot clock violation. Yeah, and you can see the bench. They're up. They're into it. That's obviously something that they discussed in that timeout, keeping the players in front of them um, at the top of the key, making sure you're defending one-on-one, -on -one, taking, taking care of your assignment, which takes care of everything else behind you as well. There you go. Looking a little more patient in their, in their press break too. Emerson a three this time, and she hits in transition. There we go. Totally different attitude here from Capital Courts. Gentile over to Moro, who just checked in the game, gets right to the basket, and is able to finish for two. She does. Comes in, <laughs> it's an offense, both times. So Capital Courts using much more of the cutter in the middle here to break through the press, constantly filing Jolie Kerr, who's able to find cutters on the wings to then attack the basket so great adjustment there by the coach of capital courts and we'll see if southwest can now change up the defense a little bit to start to cut off that pass yeah pretty textbook uh press break that they've <laughs> moved to and it's uh, it's paying dividends for them and donovan there just caught caught on the reach around and jelly kerr will go to the line So like her a bit too strong on the first. And the second, a bit strong again, but the fight for the rebound. Russell comes down with it, but tied up by Moron, 
Moro, sorry. Her pass is too strong for Donovan. It's going to be tipped out by Godet. Remains Southwest ball. And Moro does a great job. She's done that a couple times this game. She really, as soon as she secures the ball um, in her defensive half, she's eyes are up looking to see who's breaking out. And I guess when you have Sarah Donovan on your team, that's something you're constantly looking for because we've seen her a number of times in this game. And it's Laura, sorry, correction, sorry, Laura Donovan. Laurie, I, the Laura, I younger apologize. sister of Sarah Donovan, who right now is playing a starring role on her Davidson team. <laughs> That's right, we were talking about that before the <laughs> game. I apologize. So going into the second time out of the game, we do have a 13-10 Southwest lead, so Capital Courts has clawed their way right back into this. It's been great. Yeah, it has. So in a bit, I think a 5-2 run. Last time we checked the score, it was 11-5. Uh, in favor of Southwest. So Capital Course has got themselves right back in this game with a minute left in the quarter. And I think for the change, what we've um, what we've seen on that full court press, what you talked about with the middle cutter, so they're actually able to get the ball over half. I think we've seen better movement uh, in their offense when they have got, um, when they have retained possession of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and then also really digging in defensively um, and making a point of that. Like we said, we got the bench up when um, we had defensive containment at the top of the key there. Yep. And then they've been focusing on. And they've even taken Pedro to Southwest book and hitting those offensive rebounds. We've had probably double their offensive rebounds from the first part of the game in that last two minutes there. So yep. a big effort for Capital Courts to hit the offensive glass. Yeah. And as we've seen, even if you're if you're putting the shot on the net, you're giving your teammates an opportunity to uh, put in the shot on target. You're giving your teammates an opportunity to secure the rebound and then go up for, for a second chance, which have been really successful for both teams. All right. So teams both back out. One minute left in the first quarter. Little, they're just changing the shot clock here, so. I'm sure it will get ironed out by the second half. <laughs> <laughs> we have had. They're doing a great job here. I think it is a little reset problem. It's not resetting to the correct number, so it's not an operator problem. It's a reset problem. There so we go. It's the technology's fault, everyone. Yeah. All the time. Okay, so we have shot clock at 20, one minute and one second remaining in the first. A 13 to 10 Southwest lead. Let's go. Final minute of the quarter, girls. Absolutely, and Southwest here with the ball under the basket. So Litchfield's inbounds, finds a cutter on the baseline. The shot's a bit off, off the side of the rebound. Capital Courts comes down with it. And here they look to attack. Great job, they've got their full shot clock, got it up in good time. Get some movement here, hopefully get a good look. The Southwest looks to be in a man. There's that step back from Russell, a little bit short here though. Short this time, good fight for the rebound. Gentil comes down with it. We're gonna get a jump ball. And it's gonna be Godet tied her up, so it's gonna be jump ball going Capital Court's way. So great, again, fighting for those offensive rebounds. Yep, absolutely, just pursuing. It's really good to see. Capital Court gets the ball in. Newman takes it to the net. Yeah. Perfect, left-handed layup. Great, two more points. Litchfield, a deep three, a little and bit too strong. Again, an offensive rebound, and again, and then we get the foul call. Great, again, the, both teams hitting the offensive glass. Hitting the offensive glass and it being a really positive outcome for them almost <laughs> every single time. So great offensive strategy for both teams. I think it really means that they need to clean it up defensively. <laughs> but uh, just got a one-point game here with a chance to extend the lead a little bit. Gentile able to hit the first. And the second. 
And for those free throws, we know a 15-12 Southwest lead, 12 seconds remaining. Yeah. Pass a little bit too high there for Newman. It's going to be out of bounds. Four seconds remaining. Southwest full court to go. Got a quick sub here. Laura Donovan, Laura Donovan coming in for the last possession. Southwest inbounds. Cut off there by Jolie Kerr. Great defense. It's going to be tipped out, and that's the end of the quarter. So after the first, we have a 15-12 Southwest lead over your hometown Capitol Courts. Leading scores after the first quarter are Moro for Southwest with five and three for both Emerson and Russell for Capitol Courts. So coming up to start the second for Capitol Courts, we have Russell, Emerson, Godet, Newman, and Jolie Kerr. For Southwest, we have Donovan, Litchfield, Du, Welts, and Denise. Great, Capitol Courts looking to carry over that defensive intensity from the, uh, from the first quarter here right into the second. Good look there. Denise finds Laura a cutting Donovan. Donovan. Blocked there, though, by Emerson coming right over the top. It's going to be out of bounds off Capitol Court remaining Southwest ball. Great look and a really good opportunity there early for Southwest off that double team. Southwest inbound from the baseline. They get it into Donovan, guarded there by Russell. Low shot clock, only two remaining. Gets it over to Dew, who gets it off just in time, but Capital Courts comes down with the rebound. Russell leading the break here. Kicks over to Jolie Court Kerr, the long two, no good. But fighting for the rebound, Newman's able to secure it, but stepped on the line. Both teams, uh, again, looking a little bit hurried here early in the second quarter. Litchfield at the top, guarded by Emerson. There's Welts. Still getting that good motion by Southwest. It's They're pretty consistently either getting a double team or having somebody open off a cut um, with their motion offense, getting that couple courts defense a little bit out of sorts. And a great back hack there by Litchfield, just unable to convert the baseline jumper. Capital courts the other way. Newman again from that corner spot, unable to convert this time. Southwest comes down with the ball. 
it's just really a question mark now just finishing these opportunities. Both teams are having good looks, um, just making sure they're not be knocking down their shots or, or making those layups. Um, so they're both getting good opportunities. Litchfield unable to convert that look off the pick and roll. Great look again, though. So she'll, she's someone also that will start to convert, though. So Capital Courts might have to start to clean that up. Emerson drives a little bit short on that follow, though. Unable to convert. And Donovan and Russell get tied up at half. It's going to be a foul there on Russell. And Donovan was looking to hit a teammate ahead there on the break. Just got caught up, and it will be Southwest ball. Turn over there by Southwest. Capital Courts gets the ball. Good look ahead by Russell. Right to Excellent. Godet who finishes in transition. Perfect. That's a great finish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a hold there on Newman. Capital Courts ramping up the pressure here. Oh. Yep. Hold on Newman. It's going to be Southwest ball. Absolutely. And again, as a coach, you really like that intensity, but you also have to... Um, you have to play hard, but you really have to play smart as well. You know that you don't need those fouls that far away from your own basket. Um, and recognizing when the other team has possession and when you're, you're better to, to drop back a little bit and get into your defensive formation on your, your set of half. On that last foul, we did have Steen Bakers checking in for Jolie Kerr. There again, off their motion, we just got an excellent cut. Really great pass and just an, in, uh, just an inability to finish. Just unable to finish. So it was tied up with the jump ball going to Capitol Court. So it's going to be Ottawa ball here as Southwest sets up their full court. And a really, really great look by Southwest. Really great pass as a player who, who wasn't able to finish that layup. You just got to say next. Get it next time. Able to break the press there again. Capitol Courts does. Let's see how they attack this zone now. Newman to Steen Baker. Little post move just off. Donovan's able to come down with it. And she pushes the other way. Again, Laura Donovan leading the break. Kicks over to Dew in the corner. Dew looking to drive. Tipped away there by Russell, though. Fight for the ball on the ground, oh. and it's going to come out to Newman, who just couldn't find Steve Nakers back there for the outlet, so it's going to be off capital courts. It's going to remain Southwest ball with a new 24. First couple minutes here um, of the second quarter, we just had one basket by Capital Courts. Going to be a hold there on Godet as Donovan tried to cut out to the corner, so it's going to be Southwest ball on the baseline. Gentile checking in for Welts there on that foul. Passes into Donovan. Keeps her dribble alive, takes it hard to the net. Unfortunately, can't finish. Godet looking to drive. Finds Steen Bakers on the right corner. Uh, just a bit too strong. Litchfield comes down with it. Yeah, double dribble. <laughs> I was going to say. Just too many dribbles there. It's the first one she thought she might have been just gaining control, but the referee saw a difference, so it's going to be Capital Court's ball. He did, and it's his <laughs> his view of the play <laughs> that's going to dictate the call. So Capital Courts has it out of bounds. Here's Russell at the top. Gets right in. The kick out to Godet. The corner three just a bit too strong. Litchfield again with a rebound. Litchfield a pull up three this time. I'm able to convert. Ziba comes down with it. And Ziba over to Godet. Finds Russell at the top. Her three. Just long. Donovan comes down with this one for Southwest. Being hounded by the Capital Courts. It's going to be off of Newman remaining London. Southwest ball. Yeah, sure. And Max is great. Great rebound um, by Laura Donovan. And uh, just coming down with it, there's a lot of hands from Capital Courts in there. Um, it's 
can be very difficult, but as uh, somebody who can see over top, you just got to look, find her teammates down court, get the ball out of there as quickly as possible, and hopefully create an advantage um, for her teammates at the other end. They get into this motion offense. Litchfield on the right wing, working on Newman. Couldn't find anything there. Yeah, good pressure by Capital Courts this time. They're, they're, I think they're communicating, switching, Morrow. really limiting. Didn't realize the time left on the shot clock and passed it over to Litchfield a bit too high, so it's going to be Capital Court's ball. Absolutely ramping up the pressure defensively, doing a better job. I mean, we'll see how it happens in the in subsequent possessions, but that possession doing a better job, not allowing those backdoor cuts and staying with the switches and communicating. Patrick Swess has switched over to a man defense here. Let's see how Capital Court's attacks. Steen Bakers looks to drive from the top, but... Didn't put the ball down first, so it's going to be called for a travel. We've had a fair number of travels uh, <laughs> this game so far. And I think that's one of the things, too, with the high-level high school athletes. Uh, so still, a lot of those fundamental skills are still in development. I mean, they have a lot of great athleticism and, uh, and great shooting ability, but it's just those, that attention to detail on those uh, your footwork that's so, so important. Morrow's shot is off, and it's going to be rebuilt there by Steen Bakers. Russell guarded by Morrow on the left wing. She'll look to attack. Comes off the Steenbaker screen, finds the cutting roller. Unable to convert there. It's going to be tipped out of bounds. It's going to be going Capital Court's ball. Staying here. What a great pass by Russell there. Not an easy pass uh, through traffic. But finds Steenbaker just unable to convert, but still going to have another opportunity here at Capital Court's. So we have a timeout, so going into this first time out of the second, we have a 15-14 lead now for Southwest, five minutes remaining here. Yeah, so I mean, something that really stands out is mentioned it a couple of minute ago, minutes ago, but we've only had two points scored in the second quarter, so in five minutes of play. <laughs> so defensive battle here. Defense has picked up. <laughs> it's also about converting those opportunities, <laughs> as we talked about. I mean, really, we've had a couple of missed layups, so just some uh, yep. easy opportunities that these girls would generally, you know, be kind of no-brainers. Um, but when you get into the game, get into a tight game, that situation, it comes down to a lot of the uh, the mental aspect of the game as well. Um, and it is also funny, as you noted, the last two games both these teams played and were higher scoring affairs. Mm -hmm. So definitely a change of pace for both teams here with this low score, but. That just means that they can put points up in a hurry, so they'll start to hit eventually, so watch out. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. We did discuss that at the beginning, and we um, talked about Southwest having 77 in their, in their last matchup, so not on pace for that currently, <laughs> but we will, uh, we will see. And yeah, definitely as they get more comfortable in coming into the second half, once they're able to, to really have a good discussion about what they want their strategy to be, and the coaches have sort of you know, found their matchups and the, and the rhythm. Um, I think we'll be in for for a really great second half and already a close game. So, all right. So, coming another time out, we're gonna have Capital Courts ball on the baseline. And we did think that at the beginning um, that this was gonna be a close game and something too that you see uh, a lot. I mean, not just in high school sports, but it's also the consistency. You know, being the, being coming out and giving that effort every single game, working with your teammates. It's it's something that's really challenging. So. Ziva gets right to her left hand, unable to convert though in traffic. Southwest comes down within. Donovan looks to push. Great pass there by Donovan, finding her teammate on the wing, and another good one. Unable to convert there for Gentile. So Capital Courts comes down with it, but two great looks there for London. Absolutely, and a great cut by Gentile, a great find by Donovan. They'll get that one next time. There's Emerson in the left corner this time, and it rattles in her second three of the game. Capital Courts takes her first lead of the ball game, 17-15 now, 4.20 remaining in the first half. There we go, that's great. And yeah, those looks will start to fall. And Emerson's been shooting the ball with confidence, so that's really great to see. Great passing there, finds Gentile again down low. She's able to con not convert the first, but put her put back right back in. So two points. Perfect, London. and so great for her. We're talking about that mental aspect of the game. You just missed a look, missed another one, still go up strong. Um, next shot, next shot, and she got that one to fall. Steal there at the top for well, so she goes the other way and able to convert in transition. Okay, we were just talking about a little bit less scoring yeah. <laughs> that we've had, and now has uh, rattled off a couple of points just to sort of prove we us did wrong. Say, yeah, both teams <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a well, hurry. That's true. Started yeah. to hit. Here's Steen Baker's working down low. 
Her pass out. Godet and McPhee both go for it. Unable to retrieve it, but the pass from Southwest is a little bit too strong. It's going to be out of bounds. Capital Court's ball. There we go. Aaron passes back to back, but it looks like we've got a timeout. Um, and as you said, Max, as both teams have kind of uh, poured on a little bit here in the last minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so we had two points scored in the first five minutes of, uh, of this one, and now we're, we're rolling. <laughs> Perfect, so at this time out, we have Emerson now leading Capital Courts with six points on those two threes, both sides, and then leading Southwest in scoring is Morrow, still with five. Perfect. Coming out of the timeout, Capital Court's ball, full court to go. Southwest remains with their full court defensive pressure. Russell inbound, she finds Emerson. Emerson working on Litchfield right in front of us here. Donovan comes for a quick double, but able to handle that is Emerson. Good confidence by Emerson there. Not um, not losing her cool when the double team comes, able to find Jolly Kerr and uh, the Southwest gets to foul, so Capital Courts will take the ball out of bounds here on the side. Dennis on McPhee right at the top there. So good pressure, but just got her hands a little tied up on the arm, so it's going to be Capital Courts ball. Russell kicks it into Jolie Kerr on the baseline. Her turnaround jumper, and it's good. A deep two. Great turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting that ball with confidence, and that's a really wonderful thing to see from a big, being able to have that 15-foot range. Yeah. Knock those down. Juice pass for Donovan, tipped away there by Ziba. Capital Courts ball. And a better defensive rotation by Capital Courts uh, in the last couple of possessions. McPhee finds Julie Kerr right under the basket, and she's going to be fouled there by Donovan. She'll be at the line for two. Better ball movement offensively, too, by Capital Courts. So just sort of finding the rhythm here in the second quarter. So I believe Jolie covers the uh, 0 for 2 on the last time that she was at the line. So we'll see here. Perfect. Perfect. Long jumper got her going. Yeah. She's up to five points on the night afternoon. And hits a second. Two Six for points two. now for the young forward. Here's Donovan working on Russell at the top. Again, they with find that motion Litchfield, offense. the left wing three is just short, but again fighting for the rebound. Welts comes down with it. Let's so just have a, maybe another uh, discussion here with the table, but um, Southwest still in that motion offense and doing a really good job, getting some great looks and still offensive rebounding really well. Checking in there, we have Newman checking in for Zeba, so it's going to be Southwest ball on the sideline. So I have eight seconds now on the shot clock. Welts driving up top, gets to the basket, it's able to finish with a little finger roll. Yeah, a little bit creative there. Had the help defense coming, should have switched hands, did a really wonderful job. Beating Newman at the top of the key, and that's a really important position defensively. If you're not able to contain the top of the key, it forces help from somewhere that's uh, it's probably going to leave somebody open. Um, Difficult defensive rotation, so that time she was able to take it herself. Really great job. Russell able to convert at the basket there. Southwest comes up with it, but a good look there right off the pick and roll, splitting the defense and getting to the rim. Litchfield over to Welch, or Gentile, sorry, for the deep three. No good. 
Russell comes right back the other way. Kicks out to McPhee for three. Just short. It's going to be Southwest ball. All right, and what we're seeing now actually is a higher pace in the game, but with a lot better outcomes for both teams. So that last, those last couple of possessions, fewer turnovers, open looks, um, and they will convert those as we've <laughs> as we've seen. So great job by both teams right now. Southwest able to break through the pressure of Capital Courts. There's Welts working on the left wing. Mitchfield now at the top. Oh, little misconfusion there, whether she was going to cut or stay as the pass goes right behind her. It's going to be Capital Court's ball. Absolutely, and Godet and McPhee, a great switch there on the screen up top, keeping pressure on the basketball and making the ball handler make a decision, and then and they get it back. Here's Newman, finds a Joey Kerr to break through the press. Pass up to Godet. Here's Russell, the right wing. Finds Jolie Kerr right under the basket, and again with the turnaround. She's able to convert for two. Absolutely, right over top of the double team. That is an excellent play. Turns, turns and calmly knocks down the little jumper. Here's Litchfield on the right wing. Gets to her crossover. Back out to do the deep three, just too strong. Jolie Kerr comes down with it. Pass, unfortunately, picked right off by Dew. It's going to remain Southwest ball. Dew right to the rim, just off. Great defense by Jolie Kerr there, though. Um, not, uh, not fouling, not coming down, just being nice and tall, strong, and, uh, and influencing that shot. Jolie Kerr this time from the free throw line and converts, pouring it in here in the second. She is feeling it, Max, and that's great. We're seeing great energy from her on both the offensive and the defensive end. Sometimes you just need to see the ball go in the basket a couple times. Got that confidence up. Really great play on both ends, of the, both ends of the floor here. So that's eight points already here in the second. So piling it in after only two in the first. Awesome. Multiple subs here coming in for Southwest. So 31 more seconds remaining. Let's see if the new legs can help provide some offense here. Looking to tie it up or possibly take the lead going into half. Dennis working on Newman on the right side. Oh, sorry. Score was a little slow there. We won't be able to tie it up. Morrow. <laughs> Too strong. It's going to be a foul there on the rebound. Oh. 12 seconds on the clock here. Russell's got it, takes it hard to the rim. Right to the rim, and she's going to be fouled there. She'll go to the line for two. Another great take, getting herself right to the basket. She is very difficult to guard <laughs> on the wing in general, but also in transition. When she gets ahead of steam. Absolutely, you know, really good control of the ball um, in great pace. Makes it really, really difficult for the defense when she's coming down like that. And multiple times we've seen her move both to the left and to her right with little side steps, euros. So it's not even just getting in front of her, the first thing, and then trying to, when she avoids you, staying in front of her. Mm -hmm. Russell converts both from the line, so pushing the lead now to 27 Capital Courts, 21 Southwest. Southwest here. Clock hasn't started, <laughs> unfortunately. We just have a little bit of a, got Southwest hitting a shot. I think they're just gonna have to deal with this. We've still got five seconds left on the clock here, but I think that is going to be half because we didn't get the clock started right away. That basket from Southwest will count so uh, unless two, we're told otherwise. A long two from Morrow, we believe. So the score now should be 27, Capital Courts 23, Southwest. Yes, so a four-point differential heading into half. They're still sorting that out on the shot clock here in the gym. Um, but like Max said, we believe it'll be 27. We think it's going to be 27 for Capital, Capital Courts. Courts. 23 Southwest. We're just getting cleaned up whether that last pass by Moore was a two or a three. So coming out of that first half though, Morrow does lead Southwest with seven points for Capital Courts. We have 10 points, Jolie Kerr. 
and we'll be right back after a short break.
We're not going to... All right, and the three keys to the second half brought to you by Tim Hortons. Bess, let's hit us with the three keys to each team to take the game away here in the second. All right, Maxwell, I think it's <laughs> what we um, largely talked about in the... Uh, throughout the first half so we're looking at offensive rebounds when both teams have been able to get offensive rebounds and get second chance opportunities they've been converting really well and it's been very positive so I think defensively um, rebounding needs to be a focus for both of them boxing out have that written with an exclamation <laughs> point um, something for capital courts that I think they definitely improved on in that second quarter was in the in the first quarter I was looking a little bit uh, a little bit like a one-man offense uh, with Russell. Great. Uh, controlling a lot of that. And they got a lot more movement in the second quarter, so I think that's going to continue to be key. And then both teams are still applying pressure. Yep. So we have to, to, get to even get to the point where you're able to get into your offense, just have to be really confident, calm, um, and, and just break that pressure, try and break it early, and then get some good opportunities on the offensive end. So we will see how things develop here in the second half. Here Looking we go. forward to it. We're underway. Here's the start of the third quarter. Southwest ball. So we have Capital Courts opening up in a zone defense here. They swing it around Southwest. They find Litchfield left wing, unable to convert. But again, Welts gets an offensive rebound. And that's it. If you are in that in zone, uh, in that zone pressure, it is much more difficult defensively to find a check and to box out. So that's something Capital Courts needs to be super cognizant of. Um, is boxing out is more difficult when you're in that zone. Litchfield in the corner, too strong that time. And it's going to be a foul there against Southwest. It's going to be Capital Court's ball. All right, and Southwest had some good looks uh, to start the second half here. But when we look at the second quarter in terms of points scored and momentum, Capital Court's had 15 uh, versus Southwest with just eight there in the, uh, in oh, the second quarter. Oh, sorry, nine. Because so that nine? last basket oh, was by Morrow three? was oh. changed to a three. So it was our sure mistake was. going into the break. So All right. We're on the same page nine. now, though. 27-24, <laughs> scores all match, and go day right from Russell, cutting to the basket, and she's able to convert the two. Great finish. Good focus by Godet. She's had actually a couple of, of difficult finishes that she's really um, done a good job of. And then right away, Godet comes away with a steal. The other way, it's going to be blocked from Donovan from behind, but she's going to be called for the foul. Good hustle by Donovan. Um, no problem. Everybody will make mistakes but really good to see uh, players hustling back and, and trying to recover after that. So That fail, though, on Donovan was her third. So with nine minutes remaining in the third, that's a big thing to watch here, see how Coach Angioni manages her minutes moving forward. Absolutely, Max. And that's where we talk about uh, playing hard versus playing smart, um, just being really aware as a player and as a teammate um, what the situation is and trying to manage that accordingly. Ode hits the first. And... Hits a second, so a 31-24 lead now for Capital Courts. So Welts up top, working on Russell. They get it to do on the wing. Driving against Newman, kicks it over to the corner. Up top, only five on the shot clock. Donovan gets in the key, just too short. Capital Courts comes down with it. It's a good take, but Zeba gets a hand on it. And we had a little stoppage there as we're going to get a technical foul on the coach for Southwest. So it's going to be Capital Courts at the line, and then they'll retain possession after. Yeah, Russ is going to take this. Coach there for Southwest just wanting something to be called going the, to the basket. Uh, felt like Donovan might have been pushed uh, on that last layup attempt. A little bit of confusion at the table, it looks like, on how to record that foul, I believe. So we're going to get that sorted out as both teams convene, set their plan moving forward for this quarter. So here we go. So it's going to be Russell to the line, shooting the technical. And as a player, occasionally you don't mind that your coach has your back, <laughs> yeah. that they are looking out for you. Um, fighting for you and and, and uh, in the eyes of the coach of the Southwest here just looking for the the game to be called uh, both ways and Russell's able to convert the free throw from the line oh and she's gonna have one more 
And it's a second. So it's going to be Capital Court's ball here from the middle. Godet to enter it. Retaining possession, and the score is now 33 to 24. Here's Russell on the left wing. Working against Dew. Here's Zeba driving on Dew. The floater over top, no good. Litchfield comes down with another rebound. She's been all over the stat sheet today. Great push by Donovan, just gets away from her there at the end. Capital Court's attacking the other way. Here's Russell in transition, a pull up three, and it's good! Russell starting to feel it here in the third. Absolutely. Coming off a good steal, showing some real confidence there, knocking down a big three for Capital Courts. I think we're seeing a little bit slower motion here from uh, Southwest in the second half. Really, really moving in, in the first and second quarters. Oh. Um, but maybe just a little bit oh. slower here. <laughs> a little bit of confusion there as Eva <laughs> looked like she wanted to get to the Euro, to a pass to go day, got her feet tied up, the travel. Great push, though, by Capital Courts, though. Russell finding her teammate, cutting on the wing. They get a two-on-one opportunity. If they have lots more of those, they're going to convert. Definitely. So this man-to-man -man defense pressure really paying dividends for Capital Courts, switching lots of the screens. Let's see how Southwest looks to attack. Here's Donovan at the top, driving in contact, can't finish. Emerson pulls it down. And Capital Courts controls here. Russell slowing it down. Russell kicks over to Newman on the baseline, drives right to the rim, unable to convert. The fight for the rebound though, she gets her own miss and is able to kick it out to Jolie Kerr. Absolutely. Russell, a great touch pass down low to Newman. Another assist for Russell. Really, really good basketball there by Capital Courts. Really good team basketball. Um, finding each other on the offensive end, hustling for rebounds and loose balls. Excellent stuff. Donovan right back at them, though, with the three from the top. Yeah, and then a great individual effort by Laura Donovan <laughs> there coming back and hitting that three. Ooh. Long reach there by Russell, able to convert, but tied up there by Dew as she gets the steal. Litchfield unable to convert the transition opportunity, but it's going to be tipped off a go day, so it's going to remain with Southwest. So we have three subs going out for Southwest and Russell going out for Capital Courts. Well, and it looks like we've got Capital Courts here, Capital Courts ball here. So our mistake was off of Litchfield on that miss. Capital Court's ball and Capital Court's gets right down and a great look there for McPhee, unable to convert, but again, fighting for her own miss. Southwest comes up with it, good look up. Ooh. Great take there by Morrow, able to get right to the rim in the transition. Emerson rising up to try and get the block there. Gets caught with a foul instead. Little scoreboard malfunction, so we're going to sort that out. But as always, so we got Morrow at the line here for Southwest, looking to add two other, uh, two extra points to their score, whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry, fans, we are just having a little bit of score clock uh, confusion in the gym here, but it will all get sorted. So again, right, just so discussing with the, the coaches here about the <laughs> about the score. What we have is <laughs> 38 for Capital Courts, and what you can see on your screen, 38 for Capital Courts and 27 for Southwest. And yep, that's what they put so up on the board here. So we are now matching the board, awesome. so that's all good. <laughs> We're both on the same page, both teams. <laughs> We're all here scavenging our notes, seeing if we missed a basket, if they missed a basket, but... Looks like we're all sorted out. Both teams seem to be content. It's 38 Capital Courts, 27 Southwest, and we do have Morrow at the line for two for Southwest. Oh, 
Okay, refs are convening. So, so far then in this, um, in this third quarter, we've had Capital Courts uh, scored 11 points and Southwest with three points. Okay, so we're well, looking, it's been, it's been a great to add, start add, to add the to third. That total here. So so far in the third, at the end of the half, it was 27 Capital Courts to 24 Southwest. So so far, we have 11 to three in the third. So since we talked about it there in the second, I believe, of the low scoring bit, we have piling on the points here. Yeah, no, absolutely. They've done a done a really great job. Um, both teams and Capital Courts, I really think, especially from that uh, play with a quick touch pass there from Russell converting yep. to the layup, I think we've seen a really, like a kind of 180 in terms of their team play. Mentioned at the beginning of the game, Russell was doing a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one mm -hmm. opportunities, not getting much movement out of the offense, but we've really seen a change in that, so it's been a focus, um, which is really amazing to see. So Fabian, Fabian Blizzard, um, <laughs> who is the coach of Capital Courts, I mean, just a Sort of a basketball figurehead in Ottawa. <laughs> um, just a oh, very, shout out, Timo, very, Timo, Timo. <laughs> very, very experienced coach at a number of different levels. So it's really great um, to see her strategizing so well with the team. And assistant coach Awa Farah, who um, I have played with back in the day. Okay. <laughs> also, another really um, wonderful, strong female leader in basketball in Ottawa. Really great to see her continuing to be involved um, with um, with the sport, in the sport in the city. So, great to see. Shout out, Awa. Shout out, Awa. <laughs> It is, oh, it is really wonderful to see. It's, it's really nice to, um, having been involved in basketball and continu continuing to be involved in girls' basketball, it's just wonderful to see um, people that I've played with or played against staying involved in the sport, um, in the sport that's given so much to them, just giving back to this next generation of, of up-and-coming bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> Moore is able to hit the first as Southwest gets back on the board. And hits the second. Piling it in here more was this game with 10 early points for Southwest. And kind of a quiet 10, Max. I think she's just done a really good job of being in the right place at the right time, converting those open opportunities. And right away, Morrow comes with a steal on the full court press and it's going to be fouled there by Jolie Kerr. So, bam, bam, Morrow. And scrapping, yeah. <laughs> she's in there. Southwest bench adding a lot of energy coming out of that timeout. So, both teams trying to pump each other up, trying to get right back into this game. Pull the momentum. Here's Dennis up top to Litchfield. We have the students here, Capital Courts now starting to get into it. Great atmosphere again in Ottawa. It sure is. It's really exciting. It's exciting to play in front of a crowd, whether they're hostile or not. So both teams, <laughs> both teams I think are loving the atmosphere. Both benches are up. Um, it's going to be a great rest of the second half. So. Dennis's three was a bit short there. Capital Courts comes down with it. We have Jolie Kerr posting up. Her kick out to McPhee. And the bank three is in. The bank's, bank's open. open. Bank's it's open Friday afternoon. <laughs> right back the other way. Morrow says, I'll answer. A bit too strong, though. But followed up. Jen Dennis, sorry. Her two is no good. Capital Courts coming right back. Great defense there by Southwest, able to tie her up, and they're looking to push again. Absolutely, and I think we saw Southwest make a bit of an adjustment on the last possession on Jolly Kerr, who hit a couple of turnaround jumpers, really got up, didn't allow her to have that same look. Um, Jolly Kerr kicked it in, and then that's where we got the three. Dennis's three is a bit too strong. It's going to be tracked down there by Godet, but then tied up by Southwest, but the arrow is going to be going to Capitol Court, so it's going to be Ottawa ball here. Tons of energy since that break. Both teams getting after it, offensive and defensive end. It's great to see. A little confusion there as it yeah. wasn't off of a score, so you could not run on the baseline. So with that violation, the ball's going to go right back over to Southwest. Quick pass in, good look. And Gentile's going to be fouled there going for the layup by Steen Baker. So she's going to be at the line for two.
And as she continues to work on that one, I think Gentile will be able to finish it, going strong into the defender and making sure that you're um, focusing on that finish and not worrying about the foul. Gentile a little bit off on the first, but here comes the second. A bit short on the second. The fight for the rebound. Guess who's in there? Morrow again <laughs> comes up with it. Doing a really, really great job in this third quarter. Well, it looks the drive, gets to her left. Blocked out there by Steen Bakers. It's going to be off Capitol Court's remaining Southwest ball. Seven on the shot clock now. Couple of substitutions here. So oh, just a little late sub there for Capitol Courts. We have Godet checking in for Newman. So seven on the shot clock, Southwest ball on the baseline. Litchfield enter, she finds Morrow. Tied up there by Russell, it's gonna be tipped away. Oh no, it's gonna be foul on Russell on the tie up. So it's gonna remain Southwest ball. Morrow just took a little shot to the face there, but she is okay. Back on the baseline for Southwest. Here's Morrow up top. Kicks it over to Donovan. She looked for three, but Emerson closed down quickly. Morrow on the baseline, kicks over to Litchfield. Getting to the end of the shot clock here again. Got to get something up. Morrow, Morrow right the before the clock. Oh, just a bit short. Just a bit short. Russell, a great pass ahead to Godet, and she's able to finish in transition. That's really disappointing for Southwest. That's something pretty uh, pretty fundamental, just getting back on defense after <laughs> the shot opportunity. Can't have somebody behind you there for that easy score. But great defense for Capital Courts, getting them super late in the shot clock, forcing it to easy transition points. So defense to offense, working for Ottawa right now. Well, it's a deep three, is a bit off, but Morrow fighting for the rebound again. Absolutely, she's really coming and changed the energy for Southwest, doing a really great job. Emerson over to Godet, who finishes with the left in transition. Capital Court's piling it on right now. And I think those both of those possessions, Max, will be really disappointing for Southwest. Um, getting a couple good looks offensively, you know, start, starting to get back into it. Um, and then giving up just really easy opportunities that are just a matter of focus and hustle uh, on the defensive end of the floor. It's, not, it's nothing more than that. Um, just got to get back defensively, be in front of your player, and uh, those kinds of things aren't going to happen. So, so far, 345 left in the third. We do have a 45 capital courts lead over 29 to Southwest. So, so far in the third quarter, we have... Two points for Southwest. Oh, no, sorry. Five points for Southwest. <laughs> can't read. <laughs> Five for can't Southwest. Do math, can't read. 18 for Capital <laughs> Court. So a big lead here for Capital Court. It's pushing it a 13 point advantage in the third. Yep, absolutely. We talked about they finished that second quarter strong, um, had 15 points. And I mean, they've just really, really done well here in the third. <laughs> Well, his tongue's all tied up. We had a long road trip, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> nobody, nobody talked about math. Nobody mentioned math. So, anyway. Getting our brain back into the flow. <laughs> okay, so to coming out of the timeout for Capital Courts, we do have Godet, Russell, Ziva, Emerson, and Steen Bakers for Southwest. We do have Morrow, Donovan, who given Litchfield and Dew. Southwest enter against the full court press. We just have a bit of a shot clock, no, uh, just a full game clock turn off situation here. Refs have recognized it, so our score clock woes continue in the <laughs> second half, unfortunately. <laughs> um, this seems to just be a complete power malfunction, so the score clock has gone dead. Little technical issues here. Both teams returning to their bench. So leading scorers at this point, we do have Godet leading Capital Courts and Morrow leading Southwest. Absolutely, and what we just talked about before and what we've seen from Godet is just some really great finishing in transition, some really strong layups. Um, 
giving her that great point total and really contributing to uh, to Capital Court's offense as well as this lead that they've been able to build up here, the 16-point lead uh, that they have in the third quarter. So got the scoreboard plugged back in, so we should be ready to start. So let's go. 3.45 left in the third. Both teams ready for action. Due to inbound for Southwest. Capital Courts has been subbing uh, really regularly and really well yeah. and has had great contributions from the... Well, I was looking at the roster before the game, and it's like it's just eight, <laughs> eight players. I mean, it's a really, really short bench. You have to be really careful about fouls, but they've been just not, done such an excellent job distributing minutes and everybody making a contribution when they come onto the floor. So it's going to be a foul there on Capitol Courts. It's going to be who given to the line for two for Southwest. Able to convert the first. So Southwest, who was having trouble scoring so far this quarter, it's good to get to the line and start to convert these easy chances, trying to get some momentum. Definitely stop the clock, see the ball go through the, through the net. And who even is able to convert both from the line. So her first two points of the ball game come at a critical juncture here for Southwest as they cut the lead back to 14. Touched on it a couple of times. This is no, by no means insurmountable for Southwest uh, based on the pace at which they can score. They'll just have to do so with some consistency to get back in this game. Yep, so here we have Russell finds Newman at the free throw line. She likes that spot, just a bit too strong that time though. It's going to be off of Hoogieven, so it's going to be Capital Court's ball. Ball's into Russell. Good look inside to Godet. The lefty able to finish off the bank, and it's good. Another great finish. We send a finish with both hands, finished really well around the rim in difficult situations. So important. Got great focus. Driving to try and find Morrow on the corner, but Russell steps in and tips that right out of bounds. It's going to be Southwest Ball baseline. 16 on the shot clock we have. Corner shot for two, just off the fight for the rebound, and Litchfield's able to come up with it. Litchfield's been all over the glass today. Good little set play and a great rebound by Litchfield, giving them a second chance opportunity that they convert. And then Hoog, even who just converted two from the line again with the jumper, so saw the ball go through, able to convert the next. Emerson a little short on that opportunity, rebounded by Southwest, and they're pushing the other way with an advantage here. Here's Litchfield tomorrow. They wait to find another advantage. Litchfield at the top, working on Emerson. Gets to the right, but blocked by Russell coming over the top. Yeah, that's a, di that's a difficult matchup right there. Zeba coming right the other way and gets to her right hand with a little nifty step there. The great nine finishes for two points. Great control there, good finish by Zeba at the end. Morrow unable to convert the three in transition. Capital, Capital courts, courts will slow it down. Yeah. Jordan wants to slow down the pace a little bit. Last two minutes, let's take our time. Emerson finds Newman on the baseline. She gets to her left now, just a bit short, but Godet right to the rebound and finishes an and one. She's pumped, benches up, crowds into it, as she should be. Really, really great game so far for Godet. A couple of things that we've been talking about all game there, offensive rebounding. Capital Court's able to get in there. Godet securing that rebound. Good second chance opportunity. And she went up strong with that. Finished hard, not worrying about the foul. And now she's at the line for an and one. And we believe that was foul was on Laura Donovan, so that would be her fourth. So that's something to monitor here. Two minutes left in the third. Absolutely. And Godet finishes off the three-point play, extending the Capital Court lead now 52-33. A travel there by Haley Wood, so it's going to go over to Capitol Courts. Just got to take a breath when you come into the game. <laughs> Just get settled, and uh, she'll shake that one off and get right back into it. Here's Ziva on the right wing. She takes a long three. Just a bit short. The fight for the rebound goes out to Maylot. Southwest ball. Thought about some passes. She was open, decided she'd take it herself. Not a bad shot. 
Maylott kicks it down low, who finds right back to Maylott. They level give and go in two points Southwest. Great passing, good cutting. We've seen holes in the middle from both teams. Um, it's a matter of communication defensively, moving with the ball. They find Newman right at the middle, but Gentile was a bit late there, and she's so gonna be called for the push, so it's gonna remain with Capital Courts. And I said moving with the ball, but it would be moving before the ball, moving with the cutters, anticipating that, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> making sure that that pass Semantics. doesn't get in. Capital Courts inbounds it to Ziba. She looks around for her teammates. Little zone, they get it to Newman at the free throw line. She's tied up though. The ball comes out and it gets to Welts for London. Zeba does a great job there, slowing it down, not, not giving uh, Southwest any kind of opportunity to, to score. Woods, Woods gets Woods. right in the key and finishes right over her defender. So just checked in, a little travel, but then more comfortable now, finishes. Perfect, right back into it. That's what you like to see. Zeba tied up right at half, and she's going to be called for an over and back, so it's going to go right to Southwest, ramping up the pressure here to end the third. Yes, uh, aggressive defensive possessions by Southwest twice in a row there, so getting after that basketball. Well, it's inbound. Dennis kicks it over to Woods. Back to Dennis on the corner. Here's Crowd Woods, is into it here. little corner jumper this time, a bit off. Capital Courts comes down within. Here's Russell looking to attack in transition. Gets right to the basket, and she's able to finish. Great job by Russell, maintaining control of a little bit of a difficult pass and focusing on that finish. Gets two for Capital Courts. Well, right back the other way, unable to convert, but tips it out to Woods. Looks to save it. Capital Courts looking to push the other way. 10 seconds remaining here in the third. As Newman gets tied up, she's going to be fouled, and she'll be at the line for two. Capital Court's just all over that ball. They seem to be right now, uh, or in that last possession there, just winning that 50-50, which gives them a the good opportunity in transition. Newman goes up strong and is at the line shooting two. Newman a bit off on the first. Here comes the second. And rattles in the second. So five seconds remaining here. Let's see how Southwest finishes the quarter. A three for Gentile, and the bank is again open, and she hits the three. Late on a Friday. <laughs> so we have a 15-point advantage for Capital Courts, 55 to 40, heading into the fourth and final quarter. All right, so coming back in the third. So after three quarters, our leading scores for both teams. For Southwest, we have Lauren Morrow leading with 10 points. For Capital Courts, we have Isabella Godet leading with 17 and Marissa Russell adding 12. A 15 point Capital Court lead here to start the fourth and we have Woods to enter the ball for Southwest. 
both teams coming out though and looking ready. There's no quit yet in Southwest. There's no quit in Southwest. Um, and we will look forward to a really good fourth quarter here. All right, so here we go. So fourth quarter, 15 point lead, Capital Courts. And in terms of pouring in the points, we talked about both teams being able to score. In that third quarter, um, we had Capital Courts with 28 points. 28-16, so both their highest scoring. And right away, Southwest hits a three. That's Welts. Great start. Great start. <laughs> if they're going to have to cut back into the lead, a three right at the start. That's the way you got to do it. Godet gets into the key. She's going to be tied up, though. It's going to be called for a foul. So it could start offensively, defensively, not exactly what you want. You got Godet into a difficult position, just play solid defense, keeping her in front. If she wanted, wants to try and make a difficult shot, I mean, you have to live with that, but I think you had her right where you wanted her. Godet, the three from the left wing. This time it answers right back with the three of her own. So that's an, another thing about recognition and about playing smart and not just playing hard. Godet has been pouring in the points for uh, Capital Courts. And you need, so we need to know, you need to know as a defensive player where she is on the court at all times and can't give her that kind of, uh, that kind of time and space, especially that after that about. She's up to 20 now. So that's someone you're definitely going to have to see where she's on the court. Yeah, before. absolutely. I think that's a conversation the coach is having here um, as Maylot comes out of the game. And again, it, what, what we talked about, it's just a recognition thing and it's, it's the most difficult part of the game, you get your physical, you get your shooting down, you get, you know, you get your cardio, you're all good, but it's, it's really, it is a thinking game. Um, and all those things have to be going through your head all the time. Russell slings it over to Newman, who's unable to convert, but Southwest pulls down the rebound for Welt. She's gonna be fouled the full court by Emerson. So not a great foul there, but it's only her first and her team's first of the quarter. So no harm, no foul, but. Just something to be uh, to be aware of. And it, from your notes here, it looks like Capital Courts, we've talked about their short roster and they've done a really good job of making sure that nobody is in foul trouble. Um, and just like one or, two, one or two fouls here heading into the fourth quarter per player. It's doing a good job there. So here's Welts, kicks over to Litchfield, the left wing. We have 10 on the shot clock. Again, getting late in the shot clock here. Deep three for Welts. And again, she's good. That's too early for Welts in the fourth. Great shot, and we did talk about that before at the top of the key, containing your player. I had to have some help on Southwest oh. coming over, which gives Welts that uh, couple of seconds that she needs to get off the three. So defensively, that top of the key spot being so important. Right back the other way, Capital Courts was unable to convert the easy one, but another great push in transition. Southwest looking to go. Here's Welts on the right wing. Kicks it out, another three. Dennis this time, just off, but Welts fighting for a rebound, tips it out. Morrow gets it, here's Litchfield. Another three for Southwest. Great ball movement <laughs> by Southwest. Good fight for the rebound. Good persistence and they get a quick nine points there. And right back into it, these threes paying dividends, it's a nine point game. We told you they could rein it in in a hurry and three, 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 it's a whole new ball game. Absolutely. <laughs> Complete shift in momentum too, which is something, especially there's going to be shifts in momentum throughout the game and you just want to have that momentum going your way at the end of it. Southwest has done that right now. Yeah, their Change whole bench the is feel. into it. Their parents are into it. The crowd's into it. Everyone loves it. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see if they can carry this over coming from the timeout. Capital Court, so something to note is a little bit of hesitation. They still have gotten some good looks during this run. They had a few in transition. They missed some easy ones, but some nerves starting to creep back in. They see the opponent cutting into their lead, a young team. What are you gonna say to them to try and calm them down to finish out this last eight minutes? Just get back to basics. If, and again, we're talking about, in terms of no second chances, yeah. <laughs> none, none. Rebound the basketball, get after it, slow it down offensively. You know who's been scoring for you. Godet's been doing a great job. You've got some great looks when you're cutting to the basket, making the defense move. Russell can obviously take it one-on-one, -on -one, uh, create some opportunities for her teammates as well. Just do that, don't turn it over. And right off the full court press, they turn another turnover. Welts' three this time is short, but another O board for Southwest. Ziva's able to come down with it though. She's gonna get tied up and called for a double dribble there in the full court. So another turnover. 
Yeah. Energy from Southwest infectious in the four. It absolutely <laughs> is. Yeah, just kind of completely see that tide turn. Um, so Capital Courts just needs to stay positive. They need to individually stay positive and also stay positive as a team, stay positive with each other. Um, they can do this. So, so we have Donovan have that and, and Newman both checking in on that travel call. So. Here we go, so we have 7.40 left, a nine point capital court lead. And we have Southwest inbound on the baseline. 7.40 left and we have ourselves a game. Yeah, love it. What more could you ask for coming to the nation's capital? On a Friday <laughs> night. <laughs> Here's Welts working on Emerson. Finds a newly checked in Donovan on the right wing. Working on Russell. Back out to Woods. Gets in the key again and able to finish with the floater. After that early travel when she first checked in, she's been nothing but confident and had a really a wonderful set of plays offensively to get uh, Southwest back in this. And get Woods, another great play, blocking Jolie jo Kerr. Sorry, turnaround jumper. Great energy minutes from Woods here in the second half. Unlucky there is a little drag of the foot. Got a little bit ahead of herself. Yeah, just needs to maintain that composure. Um, when she gets the ball initially, doing a really great job. And that's something that will come with time as a grade nine player, Haley Woods, showing great contributions. Um, and then just that extra step, that composure, that mental aspect of the game, that will come. Such a promising young athlete. And Julie Kerr gets tipped off from her high post pass to Russell, but gets the chase down block on Morrow, but it's gonna be called for the foul. Having some mixed reactions in the crowd <laughs> about that call. Hopefully everybody is okay there on the baseline. Great hustle by Russell. Good composure and hustle by Morrow. So seen some quality basketball from both, uh, both teams. Both players do seem to be okay, so that's good with the short baseline. So we're happy about that. And Morrow's gonna go to the line for two. She's able, able to, to refocus first. and hit the first. And hits a second. And so all of a sudden both. we're in a five-point ball game. Five points, so, so far this quarter we have three points capital courts, an early 13 for Southwest, and they come up with another steal. Max, this kind of a turnaround just seemed so improbable a couple <laughs> of minutes ago. Um, coming into the fourth quarter, you felt capital courts had all the momentum, and that has just completely shifted to Southwest. We talked initially at the beginning of the game about consistency um, in terms of uh, the teams and how difficult it is with younger athletes to get that consistency across an entire game. And we're definitely seeing that right now. We've had huge swings in momentum. Um, both teams just kind of have to find some sort of, some sort of calm here. Um, and Capital Courts definitely has to do that to and with stay that in last game. foul on Russell at the top, that was her fourth, we believe. So both Russell and Donovan with four, with six and a half minutes remaining in the four. So both key contributors. That's going to be interesting to note. And right as we're talking, Steenbakers comes over with another huge block for Capital Court. Big block, great pass by Laura Donovan, um, and then a, a, a great defensive play. Steenback, Bakers the other way, unable to convert, but McPhee fighting for the rebound. It's going to be tied up by Jen Cheel. It's going to be jump ball going Capital Court's way. And Donovan's going to check in there for number 14, Dennis. So both players with four fouls are on the bench. So we'll see how each coach manages their play time the last bit. And Godet right off the inbounds, able to finish with two more. She's going to definitely be someone that <laughs> yeah. they're going to have to look for with Russell on the bench right now. So also someone Southwest is going to have to look at to try and shut down. Absolutely. And she will, uh, Southwest is trying to get back into this game. She will have something to say about it. So it looks like in terms of managing that, it looks like Donovan, uh, it looks like it's from Southwest, Donovan's doing an offensive defensive substitution. So she'll be in there for the offensive plays and then uh, be subbed out for defensive rotations as much as they can. So we have Welts checking back in here for Gentile. That ball was there tipped out by Du. Here's Capital Courts looking to break the press and look to score right away, but they're tied up. Go day. 
Dean Baker's little nifty move from the high post and able to finish for two. And it drops. All right, Capital Courts has seen the ball go through a couple of times and maybe getting back a little bit of confidence and hopefully um, hopefully for them stalling uh, Southwest momentum. Here's Welts at the top working on Godet. Here's Litchfield now. Kicks in the corner for Hoogan even. Too strong. A little strong. bit too strong, but it's going to be a foul there on the rebound. It's going to be Southwest ball on the baseline. So that foul there is on McPhee. Okay. So that is going to be her first of the ball game. And teams four. So though Capital Court's already four fouls, so Southwest's going to be in bonus the rest of the five minutes of the game. So that's also something to note. Rest of the fouls, they're shooting. Definitely. And I mean, as we had mentioned previously, that makes a huge difference. Stopping the clock, getting some points uh, on the board for your team. So that, that is definitely uh, going to be a big storyline in the last five minutes here. They have two subs checking in, both Donovan and Zeba check into the game after that foul. So Southwest to inbound here, they're down nine, 62, 53, 519 remaining in the four. Donovan gets it in the corner, a little pump and go. Kicks over to Moro. So great at finding a lane to the rim, finding her teammates or, or taking that shot for herself. Tied up, but they're able to swing it around. Donovan, three on the shot clock. Well, it's another three, just too strong. No good, and Capital Court's ball. Unable to get the rebound, but again, Morrow fighting for the offensive glass. Here's Capital Court, Zeba back, her three, just short. Litchfield comes down with it. I think from Capital Court, so they can definitely take some more time off the clock and look to get a better shot uh, with the lead. Her pass is picked off by Emerson. She's pushing the other way, drives right down low. She's going to be called for the charge. Great play by Morrow. Again. Morrow, again, <laughs> again. If you, just, if you weren't even watching, guess who's on the, uh, guess who's taking that charge? Been so many energy plays all game. Whenever it seems that Southwest needs a play, Moro just comes up with it. Absolutely, and she has been leading them in scoring, but also it's in those intangibles, the things that don't show up on the score sheet that she's been doing an excellent job with. Here's Jew at the top, kicks over to Moro. Her pass is picked off this time for Welts. Emerson again with a steal. Her pass a little bit off, but they find Godet down low. It's blocked by Welts from yeah, behind. Great Here's defense. Donovan Good over look. to Dew. Good luck. And Dew finishes. How do you do? Piper Dew finishes for two in transition. Great energy by both teams here. We just had Southwest who was able to finish there. So four minutes left. We have a 62-55 lead now for Capital Courts. It's only seven, four minutes remaining. Right down to the wire. Absolutely. They're definitely within striking distance. Godet to inbound for Capital Courts. She finds Steenbakers. Steenbakers looks to drive. A little bit tied up there by Hoog, even though it's going to go southwest way. Well, looks to drive. She's going to be fouled there. She's got the line for two. Yeah, there we go. And that's the... Uh, the fifth foul that you were talking about, so regardless of whether or not they are in the act of shooting or not, um, Southwest will get to the line for the rest of the game on any fouls. And with that foul, we do have Russell checking right back into the game for Capital Court, so we'll see if she can play out the final four minutes without committing a foul so she can keep herself trying to contribute. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. They'll be looking to utilize her offensively. Well... A little bit off on the first. And hits the second, though. It's now a six-point lead, Capital Courts. Southwest is really utilizing their bench, uh, getting those substitutions in so that we can get, they can get the matchups that they want, um, the players in the positions that they want on both offense and defense. Newman gets it to Ziba, who's able to break through the pressure. Her pass a bit too high too for high. Emerson, though, and it's going to go back Southwest way. So right now, Capital Courts is playing like the team that's down. There's been a couple of rushed possessions. Um, just a couple of sloppy plays. Just really need to try and calm down, contain that, get a couple good stops on defense, and uh, some focused offense. 
Here we have Litchfield at the top working against Goday. Here's a Donovan screen. Little reject, they get it to do on the wing. Tied up by Zeba. It's gonna be tipped out of bounds off of Capitol Courts. Three seconds remaining on the shot clock. All right, we've got a timeout for Southwest here. Three seconds on the clock. Capitol Courts is gonna look to shut that down defensively and Southwest will look to get a good play here. A little confusion there about what was happening on the ground, but it's going to be a timeout. So coming out of the timeout, it will be three seconds. Southwest ball on the sideline. All right. 3.28 <laughs> left in the game. Six points. Tensions are rising for both teams. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting. It's really what you like to see. OSBA, another great game on Game of the Weeks. So we love you tuning in. Tune in again tomorrow as we'll have the same Southwest team facing Louis Riel at 2 p.m. Eastern time. 1 p.m., sorry, correction. 1 p.m. Eastern time on OSBA TV. We'd love to see you again. Absolutely, and it'll be great to see, regardless of the outcome of this game, how Southwest comes out tomorrow um, and what adjustments they've made based on their performance today. It's also, I mean, it's a lot for the Southwest <laughs> team. Yep. Driving down yesterday all the way from London. Yep. They're playing tonight and a really quick turnaround to the 1 p.m. game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how they respond. Um, respond in that game against a Louis Real team. <laughs> so here we do. We have both teams coming out of the timeout, ready for the final three and a half minutes here. For Capital Courts, we still have the same lineup. Newman, Emerson. Russell, Zeba, and Godet for Southwest. We have Dennis, Donovan. Oh, sorry, it was just a quick little turnaround. Yeah. Dennis, a little <laughs> goes for the reverse, unable to finish. Good but Capital look. Courts comes down with the ball. And Russell, there you go. You see telling her teammates to calm down. Uh, she just oh. has some good defense. Oh, great Donovan move gets to by the Donovan. Euro, just couldn't finish. Great move, though. Newman's pass gets right over to Emerson. Looks to attack, but she's going to be fouled there by Hoogieven, looking to attack at the basket. All right, a little bit of a scramble there, coming out of that, uh, coming out of that timeout. Donovan with a great move off the steal with good defensive pressure. Capital Courts here on Capital the offense. Looks oh. to inbound, but the pass is tipped away before it could get to Russell. And if that's a foul on Capital Courts, then... It's going to be yeah. a foul on Capital Courts, so it's going to be Southwest two be for shooting. Southwest again. So those fouls early, not looking great for Capital Courts now. <laughs> no, and I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> we, were, we were discussing in the third quarter how they had done such a good job keeping their foul counts under control, or had even heading into the fourth, that's such a good job keeping their foul count under control and how important that was. And I mean, we're seeing the importance of it. It's gotten out of control, and it um, has the, the chance to impact the outcome of the game here. Midfield a little bit short on the first. Here comes the second. There we go on the second. Hits the second, so we have a five-point lead now. Donovan checking right back into the ball game. Godet to enter. She finds Emerson, who's stolen off by Welts. They get to Litchfield from the free throw line, unable to finish. The fight for the rebound. Godet gets it over to Russell, who's going to be fouled oh. before she can kick it ahead. And it, that is on Donovan, and if that's uh, if we're right on that, that's going to be her fifth foul there. So that foul was on Laura Donovan, so that's her fifth, so she'll have to check out of the game. So that's going to be a tough blow for Southwest with 2.50 remaining, but we have seen the other players go on a run yep. for them, so they're definitely still within striking distance. No, absolutely not out of it. And we'd seen an offensive defensive substitution with Donovan. She was on on defense there. A little bit of a different strategy and unfortunately just picked up the foul. And right away, Emerson's pass was picked off, but do couldn't convert in transition. Emerson gets the ball right back, and here comes Capital Courts. Here's Emerson, a long three from the left wing, unable. Godet fighting for the offensive rebound, couldn't come up. Here's Welts now working against Emerson. Able to get by. 
controlling the tempo here for Southwest. Well, it gets Taking the left it hand and then she gets finishes it to go. again. Huge second half here for Wells. Absolutely, and we've got a four, point, a three-point game with two minutes left. Here's Russell able to control it for Capital Court. It's a great pass to Newman down low. Unable to convert that shot, but Godet again on the offensive rebound. It's going to be tied up, jump ball going Southwest way. Get a body, get a body, get a body, get a body. Control those boards. Luckily for Southwest, uh, jump ball is going to go their way, but you have to rebound. <laughs> Final two minutes, we have a three-point game. The hometown, Capital Courts leading by three. Here's Welch, she's been huge here in the fourth, working from the top. Gets the left hand, couldn't finish in traffic. Right back the other way, here comes Capital Courts. Zeba gets into the lane, tied up. No call, goes the whole way. Right back comes to back Capital to Courts. Oh, oh, but picked off by Russell. Russell looks to slow it down. Smart choice by the young player for Capital Courts. They swing it to Zeba. A big three from the white ring. Big three. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a huge shot. That three extends the lead now to six for Capital Courts. A minute and a half remaining. So both teams a little bit tied up in traffic both ways. Good, no calls by the officials. Then a little bit of sloppiness, turnovers, and then right away, Zeba answers with a huge three. Yep, that's big, extending the lead to six. Um, with just a minute and a half here left in the game. And, and it did seem at that point that Southwest did have momentum. They had cut it all the way back to a one possession lead. They, they had were a couple down of good 15 steals. coming yep. into the fourth. Yep. They, it felt like all the momentum was on their side. Zeba bangs a three in transition, yep. and it just felt like Capital Courts was erupted <laughs> with almost like relief. They're like, oh, okay. Yes, definitely, they're, they had been there. We talked about um, Southwest going on that run and Capital Courts with that, uh, that mental aspect of the game, their confidence getting a bit lower, um, but just seeing that big shot go in <laughs> makes it all the difference in the world, brings the crowd back into the game. We talked about the importance of the crowd earlier. The Capital Courts crew had been a little bit more, uh, a little bit uh, quieter in this yeah. fourth <laughs> quarter. They're into it after that shot though, yeah, so here we it. go, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we go. Litchfield to enter for Southwest, a minute and a half remaining, down six. And so great to see that from Zeba, grade nine. No fear. No fear, <laughs> love it. Again, here we hear the crowd get right into it for Capital Courts. Great Boy pass. Cutting Gentile and able to finish for two right under the basket. Excellent, excellent vision. Capital Courts, though, able to pass right over the top of the full court press. Zeba again, and she finishes with two. Wow. Great nine. Zeba, up huge at Capital the end of Courts. this game. Oh, and right back, Gentile now for three. Trading buckets, these two. Just a little adjustment there on the time from 106 to 108. Didn't want to didn't want to rob anybody of any time at the end of this really exciting matchup here. And we've got a three-point differential, back to a three-point differential after that big three from Gentile. Also not afraid of the moment. Nope. Max, love to see that. <laughs> honestly, honestly, love to see that. I think a lot of times, um, uh, you know, a lot of times you can get girls who are afraid of the moment. Um, this is not the case in this game. No. no. <laughs> Give me the basketball. Yeah. Watch, watch me. Let watch me, me work. Just, just, let me, just watch, watch me. me work. Love it. Here's Capital Courts again, the full court press. Russell trying to find Steen Bakers a little bit high, but she's able to control it. Her pass, though, is tipped out of bounds. It's going to remain with Capital Courts. Yes, in Capital Courts, we have both coaches jumping up, <laughs> motioning with their hands. Okay, just relax. <laughs> relax. Keep it under control. We're still up three here. Let's see what kind of a good shot opportunity we can get. So a one possession lead here for Capital Courts. Up three, one minute remaining. And on the shot clock, we only have 15 seconds. So we'll see what they can do with the rest of this possession. Dean Baker's at the top, looking for Russell on the wing. She's guarded by Dew. She looks to attack. Right in the lane. Her floater's a bit too strong. Comes down by Welts. 
Well, it's pressured oh. by Russell, unable to control it with the left hand. It's going to go back half the course way, 48 seconds remaining now. Great job by Russell. Wasn't able to convert on the opportunity, but puts on that defensive pressure, forces the turnover back to Capital Courts. Godet to inbound for Capital Courts. Gets it into Ziba at the top. They have 45 seconds remaining, 20 on the shot clock now. Ziba working against Welt. She's going to take it herself. Gets to the left side, unable to convert the fight for the rebound. Everyone's in there. Doing Godet tied up. The jump ball is going to go to Capital Courts. Okay, stays here again. <laughs> Capital Courts is having a couple of possessions here, and they're fighting. Both teams are fighting. And that instance is just going to go Capital Courts way. Refs are having a little bit of a talk about it. I think the talk is whether the jump ball is going to cause the shot clock to go to a 24 or a 14. So whether... Southwest head possession before the tie-up or after, and it looks like it's going to go to 14. So the possession was during the tie-up, so not a full shot clock. So 20-second differential. Southwest is still good to play out this possession. Down three, 34 seconds in the game, 14 on the shot clock. Absolutely, and that's the kind of insight you get here. OSBA TV. Ooh, great pass to a cutting Russell and able to finish with the floater. Excellent. Excellent focus in the lane. Really good strength by Russell. Coming back here, Southwest. Oh, and, and another three. Huge <laughs> shot by Gentile. I think that oh, was Dennis. Den yes, Denny's. absolutely. Dennis, another My three. Apologies. Everyone piling it in for <laughs> Southwest. I just can't keep up, Max. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of them. Threes, threes, they're everywhere. <laughs> Raining threes. And that is a huge shot, bringing it down to a two point, a one possession ball game um, where a three pointer could win it. Where Southwest has hit a number of threes here at the end, putting themselves in an excellent position for the final 23 and a half, 23.8 <laughs> seconds. Wow. So a final 24 seconds. We have a two-point lead, Capital Court. Their ball. They do have three fouls Southwest, so they're going to have to take two to get in the bonus so we can expect ramped up pressure, trying to get a steal right off here. If not, they're going to have to foul. But we're going to have to make sure Capital Courts takes care of the ball here. They know the defensive pressure is going to come. Yeah. If they hold it for long enough, they will foul. But just smart decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Because Southwest has been able to generate a lot of opportunities on that really like gritty defensive pressure yeah. that they've been putting on in the second half. Um, and at times, Capital Courts, ha Capital Courts has looked a little bit, <laughs> looked just a little bit <laughs> frazzled <laughs> under that defensive yeah. pressure. <laughs> definitely, Southwest definitely, and they have some like a few athletes there with. Great quickness, great length. They're getting into passing lanes. They're just flying all over the court. So Capital Court sometimes doesn't even expect them. And then, oh, in the passing lane, and they're yep. gone. Yep. And I, I don't know if that's going to – I don't know if that has come into play in this fourth quarter with the comeback, but also just the number of bodies, right? They've rotated through a, a lot of girls in this game. So we're getting fresh legs a lot of the time and getting contributions from a bunch of different players. So here's Capital Courts to inbound on the sideline. Go day to enter. We have 24 seconds remaining. Capital Courts, the hometown team, up two on a visiting Southwest. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. We got a tough one. Zeba at the top. Inbounds, passes it to Newman. We now have 16 on the game clock. So it'll be interesting to know when Southwest is going to make their move. We've just got 10 seconds left here in the game. They would go to look. Pressure wrestle at the free th at the half court line. So now it's nine seconds. That's going to be their fourth foul. Still need one more to get them in the bonus and get it back here. I guess the I mean they're going to be looking for a steal on this inbounds play here. Yeah, but they look have to. to. Them, look to them to act a little bit sooner here. I would think as they still do need another score after this possession. Yeah, absolutely. They need to leave them leave themselves <laughs> a bit of time on the clock, um, especially if they're going to put capital uh, courts on the line where they do have an opportunity to extend their lead. So Godet to enter again for capital courts. She looks for Russell. Oh, passes a little Balls bit out. off on the baseline, but Russell able to come up with it. And the clock's Kick it running, out Max. To Ziba. Great play from her behind. And Ziva's able to not get fouled, and Capital Courts is able to pull it out. A little bit of an anticlimactic <laughs> ending to what was, no, I mean, but what was an awesome fourth quarter. Yes. Um, we were, I think we were both expecting um, Southwest to act a little bit sooner to yep. either you know, Stand try and intercept the, game, the ball maybe. or uh, get uh, get Capital Courts on the line. So, 
Well, that, that, and that is all she wrote. That's how it ends. We yeah. have a 69-67 victory for Capital Courts. They were up 15 heading into the fourth and were able to hold on for a two-point victory. And leading the Capital Courts with 22 was Isabella Godet. Leading Southwest was Emma Welts with 13. So great first game on our Game of the Week weekend here in Ottawa. We have the winning hometown team Capital Courts by two over the visiting London Southwest. And we'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Tune in. Thanks, Max.